Welcome to Gazroth Tutorials. I'm Gazroth, and today we are going to look at object snapping and grouping. So to start off, we're going to go into our create menu and grab a couple objects. Let's grab a sphere, a cube, and a pyramid. And let's take a look at these three objects. Notice how the wireframes don't match the objects. And this can make snapping a, a bit challenging. Now if I bring my joystick down, I get these circles, these little points. These are snapping points, so if I can take this one and bring it over here, and it will snap to that location. And that's basically the gist of snapping objects. However, there are some things to make it a little easier. So we're going to go down to our settings, and we have object points which were those points on the objects and we have grid points now we can change the distance between them I have it set to one meter and if we go back and we grab an item you see these white kind of crosshairs and you can snap to those different locations another thing we can do is we can go into our settings and we can set our object rotation to snap to angle I have it set to 45 degrees and if we click and try to move our controller it'll snap to only a 45 degree angle and it makes your initial placement a lot easier. Make sure your initial object rotation is 0, 0, 0. And how do we group items? So we can temporarily group these two items by clicking and dragging them and we can move them together. But this is only temporary, so if I click off, now they're not grouped. However, if I click and drag, and then it says paint now, but if I bring it in here, it'll say group. Now it's grouped, so if I unclick, it's still it's a permanent group. And if I want to ungroup, I highlight it, and I can go ungroup, and now it's different. However, let's take a look at our our vectors here so we have a positive Z that is our forward direction and then our positive Y is our upward direction now what happens if we say rotate this guy that way and now it's positive forward direction is this way now if I were to highlight my cube first and then the sphere my positive Z and Y are still in the correct position now if I were to select the sphere first and then the cube here we have our positive Z on this side and our positive Y up there instead of where it should be pointing out this way. That is why we always want to make sure our attributes are zeroed out. And now our Z is again pointing in the right direction. So we can highlight these two and create a group. That way we can move it together. So say we wanted to add this pyramid to this group. Now there's two ways we can do this. Right now it's not that big of a deal. We could just ungroup and then group them together and then now we have a group with three objects. However, as your groups get bigger, it might be less desirable to do that. So we're going to create our group here and we're gonna open our properties panel. So if we want to add the pyramid to this group, what we need to do is while this panel is open, we need to highlight the object we want in the group and then add this press to zoom in or out of this group button. And now it's in the group. So if I were to exit out of that, it is now in the group. And we can do that same thing in reverse. So I will highlight pyramid and zoom out. And now it is no longer in the group. The snapping feature also works while you're inside a group. So if I were to properties, zoom in, and then make sure my snapping is on and select, I can snap inside of a group. And then the group boundary, which is this wireframe here, will adjust based on where all our objects are. One last thing about groups of items is say I go in here and I'm going to make our sphere an interactive physics base and gravity is on. Let's ungroup this quick. The ball is going to fall. Now if I were to select my square first and then our sphere and group it, 
the physics isn't affecting our sphere anymore because physics applies to the group as a whole because when you create a group it creates another object so technically there's three objects here you have the square the sphere and then the group so the group isn't set to physics so if we set that to physics and now it's going to fall just to test this out here let's go into our go to world under player settings and we can uh, can can hands collide with physical objects yes they can it's already set to that so if we go over here and we find our ball let's move this down so I can touch it now if we go over here my body is colliding with it because it's set to collidable but my hands are not even though the sphere is set to physics the group is not and if we were to take the group and let's say into interactive physics let's turn gravity off and then go in and play we can go over here and we can interact with the whole group and we can push it we can do whatever we want. I don't want to hit my desk. Kind of, kind of like playing with a balloon here. Kind of like a pawn from chess or something. Yep, and we can just keep smacking it, and it'll float off into because there's no gravity. It'll just keep going. Bye. Have fun on your journey into the abyss. Well, that is pretty much it for object snapping and grouping. If you like the video, please hit that like and subscribe button. And if you have any uh, suggestions for future videos or want something or want to see something done, please let me know in the comment section below. Have a good one.